Hey everyone! So I'll Hate Them and Kazuo's rerun banner is coming in the next couple of days, with I'll Hate Them's being his first rerun. With two new meta units making an appearance, it can be kind of difficult to decide who to go for. Today, we'll cover what each unit brings to the table and whether they are worth pulling for for your account. Let's start with I'll Hate Them, who is a 5-star Dendro DPS character that specializes in dealing damage both in single target and in minimal AoE situations. I'll Hate Them's role is quite flexible because he can be the main DPS in Quicken teams or be a driver that provides solid personal damage in Bloom-based teams. Another thing that's flexible about I'll Hate them is his rotations. This is due to how his elemental skills such as the light mirror mechanic works, which converts his attacks to dendro damage. Note that it can't be overridden by other infusion methods like Bennett or Candace's C6. While in this mode, he has projection attacks that deal AoE dendro damage in a 1.6 second interval when hitting opponents. The more mirrors that you have, the more damage your projection attacks do. Therefore, maintaining 3 mirrors is very important, especially if he is the main DPS in the team. To maintain mirrors, you have various methods to obtain or refresh them. You can gain Chisolite mirrors in 3 different ways, his elemental skill, his elemental burst, and charged or plunging attacks. His elemental skill has a tap and a hold function similar to Kaching's. Using it deals dendro damage and generates a Chisolite mirror. He gets an additional mirror if he has no mirrors upon using his elemental skill. Note that I'll hate them to just a light mirror mechanic is attached to his elemental skill, including his projection attacks. His elemental burst grants him a set number of mirrors and deals more damage based on how many mirrors he has when casting it. A couple seconds after using it, having 0, 1, 2, or 3 mirrors grants him 3, 2, 1, or 0 new mirrors. It costs 70 energy with an 18 second cooldown, making it somewhat costly and requires him to have some energy recharge in his stats in order to use it every rotation. A small tip about his elemental burst, as mentioned earlier, is that there is a slight delay before he gets his mirrors. During this window, you can swap to another character and use an ability, then swap back to all hate them. Lastly, his Ascension 1 passive allows him to get a mirror once every 12 seconds from using charge or plunging attacks. Outside of that, his Ascension 4 passive increases his projection attacks based on his elemental mastery. While his elemental skills damage scales more with attack on its initial cast, the projection attacks scale more with elemental mastery and are his primary source of damage. Most rotations, regardless of what role he's performing, start with his elemental burst to instantly get 3 mirrors. Up to 2 projection attacks can be triggered for each mirror generated, so wait until the second attack procs before refreshing your third mirror. You can repeat this step twice since mirrors can be refreshed through casting his skill and a charge or plunging attack. Here's an example of his most used rotation. This rotation aims to maximize his 3 mirror state uptime and is very easy to do. Stand with me. A process of elimination. However, he isn't restricted to this combo. You can find other ones on guy pages like Gaching Mains, who have an entire section dedicated to his combos. I'll hit them's elemental skill is first in priority when leveling it as it contributes to the majority of his damage. His normal attack and elemental burst have equivalent leveling priority, but in most cases you can level his normal attacks first. I'll hate them's energy requirements aren't demanding, but he does need a decent amount of energy recharge if you want to burst every rotation. He gets one dendro particle per projection attack, averaging about 5 to 6 particles every rotation. In double dendro teams, you can aim for around 130 to 150 energy recharge. However, in solo dendro, this range goes between 150 up to even 200 energy recharge, and it depends on the rotation and combo that you use. His go-to artifact set is 4-piece Gilded Dreams, as he can reliably trigger the 4-piece effect, and benefits from both the attack and EM bonuses that it provides. You can do 2-piece variations with EM, Deep Wood Memories, or Emblem in cases where bursting every rotation is more prioritized. 4-piece Deep Wood Memories is optional to use on him if he's solo dendro, but only if the other characters in the team can't reliably proc its 4-piece effect. For stats, he can either go an EM or an attack percent sans, depending on which has better stats overall. Then you can give him a dendro damage bonus goblet and a crit circlet. You want to aim to have anywhere between 200 to 300 elemental mastery on I'll Hate Them as it helps with many things like his Pressing Salt when he's passive, and overall projection attack damage. This threshold, taking into account that this is total element of mastery, is relatively easy to reach, even without an EM stance. I'll hate them has a variety of weapons that he can use, especially in the 4 star department. His best weapon is his best in slot as it gives a slight boost in crit rate and provides a lot of crit damage with its secondary stat. Its passive also increases his attack and skill damage by a portion of his elemental mastery, making it perfect for I'll hate them. We'll get a bit more into this weapon in the weapon banner section. Next in line are the Primordial Jade Cutter, Misplitter, and Hironkapakafutsu, as they provide crit and have passives that pair decently with I'll hate them's kit. Freedom Sworn is another option, but if you have any of the other weapons listed above, then don't really bother using it. You can use most 4-star weapons, including the Black Sword, Tokopu Shigure, and Iron Steam. 
Cypher's Moonlight is optional if you want to alleviate his energy needs. Mavonius is also another great energy weapon, especially in teams where his main purpose is Dendra application. For those who don't have any of these weapons, Harbinger of Dawn is usable, but only if you have a reliably good shielder like Zhongli. Alhatham can flex into every Dendro team, but he is frequently played in Quicken and Hyperbloom teams. If you have Nahida, I really recommend pairing her with him in these archetypes as her kit gives him a nice damage boost, notably her Ascension 1 passive's effect. She can also hold 4-piece Deepwood, allowing him to freely use Gilded Dreams. Baiju and Yaya are also good second Dendro flex units as they provide defensive utility alongside being able to use 4-piece Deepwood in single target or minimal AoE situations. Baiju specifically slightly increases Alhatham's spread damage through his Ascension 4 passive's buff. Although this buff isn't really that significant compared to Nahida's, it's still nice nonetheless. Next, let's talk about the 5-star Animo unit, Kazuha. As an Animo crowd controller and buffer, he is a staple in many teams and thus makes him an extremely valuable unit on most accounts. With Dendro's release, he's become even more valuable as he can flex into nearly every Dendro team. What makes Kazuha such a strong unit is his crowd control and his buffing provided by his kit. To start, his elemental skill pulls and drags enemies near him, dealing animal damage and lifting him in the air. He can then do a plunging attack that deals animal damage. His skill has a press and a hold function. Pressing it does less damage and has a smaller pull AoE and can be used while he is mid-air. Holding it pulls enemies in a larger AoE, deals more damage, applies more ammo gauge, and generates more particles for Kazuha at the cost of increasing the skill's cooldown. Whether you use his press or hold will severely depend on the setup that you're creating. His Ascension 1 passive allows his ability to absorb elements he contacts and makes his plunging attack deal additional damage of the elemental type. While Kazuha's elemental absorption on screen shows only the primary element, he is able to swirl multiple elements. This is better known as double swirling. The setup for these swirls really does depend on the team, but the most straightforward example I'll present here is with Child National. Teamwork is dreamwork! As one with wind and cloud! You're toast! Goba, get them! You can run! If you want to learn how to double swirl in other team compositions or want a more in-depth explanation, there are tons of videos here on YouTube that showcase it. I personally highly recommend watching the Jeff's video on it as he provides a more in-depth insight on this subject. By learning how to double swirl, you can fully utilize his Ascension 4 passive, which gives party members an elemental damage bonus to the elements that he swirls. This damage bonus increases with each point of his elemental mastery, which provides a really nice buff to teammates. Kazuha's Elemental Burst does an AoE animal slash upon casting it. The AoE will absorb the primary element it comes into contact with and periodically deals AoE animal damage plus additional elemental damage of the absorbed element. His burst provides both another method of triggering swirl and extra damage over time off field. It costs 60 energy with a 15 second cooldown and lasts only 8 seconds, meaning you'll want to give him some energy through artifacts or perhaps Favonius. Something to note about elemental skill and burst elemental absorption is that the quote main one absorbed, which you visibly see on the screen, follows a priority ranking of sorts. In order it goes Pyro, Hydro, Electro, then Cryo, or commonly referred to as Fek. If you want a more in-depth explanation of how this works, there are plenty of resources that I'll link in the description to help you out. In terms of leveling prioritization, you actually might want to prioritize getting Kazuha to level 90 first before anything else as it directly impacts his swirl and reaction-based damage. Next in line is his elemental burst, and then his skill and normal attack. As an animal support, you want to have him on 4-piece for Descent Venera. This is because of the 4-piece effect, decreasing enemies' elemental resistance to infuse elements. The resistance shred can affect multiple elements at a time, making learning double swirl even more beneficial. A fun artifact set you can put him on is 4-piece Thundering Fury and Taser and Quicken teams. These teams allow him to use the set's passives very frequently and use his elemental skill repeatedly. For stats, generally running full DM is the way to go on Kazaha. However, this is only if you're meeting his energy requirements first. If not, you can opt for an energy recharge sands or a weapon. Generally, since he's used as the only animal unit, you'll want to have around 160 to 180 energy recharge with Kazuha on Favonius or a Sword, or maybe have other teammates holding Favonius weapons. Kazuha prefers to use any weapon with an Elemental Mastery or Energy Recharge secondary stat. His best weapon is his best in slot, Freedom Sworn, as it provides a high EM secondary stat to maximize his Ascension 4 buff, and its passive provides a normal attack and attack increase for nearby party members. Despite this, 4-star options like Syphos, Tukaboshigure, Favonius, and Iron Sting are both more accessible and can work more favorably in other teams as they help fulfill his ER requirements, or are just simply better to use in teams where the buffs from Freedom Sworn aren't really as valuable. 
As mentioned earlier, Kazuo can be flexed in nearly every team archetype. Some examples of teams that he can be played in include Freeze, National, and Quicken. His Ascension 4 buff, Proc Control, and utilization of Viridus of Venera Red Shred makes him a very valuable unit and any team that he can be slotted into. Now that we've discussed what these characters have to offer, who should you pull between the two? Kazuo is definitely the better choice between the two because he can flex into nearly every team composition. Additionally, his buffing capabilities and crowd control massively amplifies his team's DPS. His only downside as a unit is that Sucrose exists and can debatably be better in certain teams compared to them. This is due to one of the key differences between the two units, which is their team buffing capabilities. While Kazuo buffs elemental damage through his Ascension 4, Sucrose gives elemental mastery buffs directly with both of her passives. Sucrose's elemental mastery buff can be more useful in teams that rely on reaction damage that enjoy more elemental mastery like Dendro teams. However, for teams that aren't as reliant on elemental mastery like, say, Freeze or Mono Element teams, Kazuo may be the better option. And if you're in more AoE heavy content, then Kazuo is definitely preferred over Sucrose as his card control ability is stronger, especially his hold skill, in comparison to Sucrose. Now you may be wondering why I'm not really adding Venti into any of these comparisons here. While Venti is another animal support unit to take into consideration, his usefulness is heavily relying on the opponents that he's against. If they aren't easily suckable by his elemental burst, then Venti pretty much falls off the rails. Plus, Venti doesn't have the buffing capabilities the other two have and is more centered on preventing energy and extra elemental damage in his burst. If you already have Kazuo or aren't interested in what he provides, then I'll hate them is also a really solid option to pull for as well. I would especially recommend gaining I'll hate them if you don't have many DPS carries on your account or you want to add more variety to your Dendro team archetypes. Although he can be kind of tricky to learn at first, once you get used to his kit, you'll find that there's many ways to use him. Something to note about I'll hate them is that his value, like many Dendro or Dendro reliant DPS units, is whether or not you have Nahida. Nahida does improve his damage by a considerable amount, so if you already have her, then getting him generally, of course, becomes a bit more worthwhile. However, she's not necessary for him to be good, and pulling for him simply for what he provides is still valuable for his role as a DPS and Dendro driver. Thankfully, there is a decent selection of other off the Dendro supports like Baiju, Dendro Traveler, and Yao Yao who can perform just fine and also relieve him of having to use artifact sets like 4 Piece Deepwood Memories. Let's now take a look at the 4 stars featured on their banners. The 4 stars featured are Zhangling, Heizhou, and Yao Yao. All of these characters are actually pretty good, especially Zhangling and Yao Yao. Zhangling is a staple in many teams alongside with Bennett and provides massive off-field DPS through her elemental burst. Gain her constellations improves her power massively, most notably is her C4, which makes her elemental burst last 14 seconds instead of 10 seconds. Yao Yao is a nice defensive unit who provides healing in both her elemental skill and burst. These abilities also give her some nice dendro application that isn't too strong, making her synergize well with things like Quicken teams. Yao Yao C1 directly buffs DPS carries like I'll hate them into Nari, as it gives extra dendro damage bonus and stamina when characters are within her Radish's explosion AoE. Asia, while not as valuable as the other two, is still a nice 4 star option for players who don't have Sucrose or Kazuha, or just prefer his melee playstyle. He provides solid on field damage with his elemental skill and can work as an animal driver for teams like Taser and National variants. His constellations considerably improve his damage output and quality of life, and his Ascension 4 passive gives a slight elemental mastery buff to teammates. This makes him a decent unit to have overall. His main downside is that if you have Sucrose or Kazuha, or both, he isn't as valuable since he gets outperformed by them. Nonetheless, it's clear he exists more as a for fun option who can just get by with his performance and has a playstyle that is likable for many players. Lastly, let's cover their weapon banner. This banner features Freedom Sworn and Light of Foliar Incision as the 5 stars, with Waybreaker's Fin, Moon's Moon, Favonius Sword and Codex, and the Sacrificial Greatsword as the featured 4 stars. Overall, this banner is actually somewhat decent as both of the 5 star weapons are relatively strong in their own respect. However, Light of Foliar Incision is only really good for all hit them and maybe Kaching. Even then, if you already have other crit weapons like Jade Cutter, Haran, or Mist Splitter, then it isn't as worth getting. Excluding Kazuha, Freedom Sworn is pretty useful on many off-field support units like Kukishinobu and Jean, who can trigger reactions with ease or benefit from the passive's effects. For Kazuha specifically, however, he has so many other weapon options to the point that Freedom Sworn becomes generally less valuable to want to pull for innately. Regardless, it still reigns supreme as his best in slot. The 4 stars featured are nice, but pulling on a weapon banner for a 4 star is never a good idea. It would be much better if you just save your wishes on something else. Please. Alright, that concludes this banner review. If you guys enjoyed it, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And until the next video, bye bye